I could see like a, a wee ball or something right against the rocks. I realised there was actually a little kid stuck in the rip. Uh, south Rhino to Central, oh, I could be in here, South Corner. Rhino's in the tower and just gave a radio call to a few heads down the South Corner. Central to Tommy. That kid in the black shirt, right down the south end. I realised pretty quickly that I had to move fast and get out there to him as soon as possible because he, he wasn't the best swimmer. Uh, Tommy's in. When I got to him, he was really tired. His breathing was heavy and... <laughs> He didn't have much longer in him out there. When you get people on the board, you tell them to lay on your belly, face the front. And every now and then, like a little skinny kid like himself, I was like, oh, just lay on your back, that'll do. When rescues go wrong, a lifeguard's pride isn't the only thing that can get hurt. And I thought, here we are, nice wave back to shore. Then he sits up. Which caused a nosedive. And this resulted in me getting a rescue board straight to the balls. Ooh. I thought, oh no, the balloons have popped. Got me good. <laughs> Look at him waddling up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a penguin. Right in the meat and two veg. Besides that, it's pretty good, eh? <laughs> I was just cruising around in the rhino when I decided to go for a, a trip down south. That random trip turned into a definite rescue. I could see like a, a wee ball or something right against the rocks. I realised there was actually a little kid stuck in the rip. Uh, south Rhino to Central, oh, I could be in here, South Corner. I left the Rhino still running, just jumped out, just ditched everything on the sand and grabbed the board and just started running. And all I see is this, this little kid starting to go under. The boy is alone in the most dangerous part of the beach. I grabbed the kid and it was like nothing happened. And that broke my heart, like, you know, like that kid was so close to, you know, death. The boy has no idea of the danger he was just in. Once I grab him and take him back to shore, I'm not going to lie, I was that angry. Where are your parents? Over there. And he's not even watching. He had no idea that his son was actually in trouble. He was right against the rocks taking pictures. Nine-year-old Jackie and his father James are on a one-month holiday from China. Is this your son? Oh, yeah, yeah. He nearly died. Huh? No one's... Oh, it's so dangerous here, OK? Watch out, you don't want to go Oh, please don't stop me. There's no one here. It was just like I was down here and I came back. Okay. It's so dangerous, mate. I just... You don't want to There's nothing he could have done because he's not going to understand. There was that language barrier. And, yeah, that, that was a... That rattled me heavily, that, that rescue. Lifeguards are dumbfounded by the situation. What happened there, mate? Was that just a little kid? Yeah, it was just a little kid, mate. It was just right on those rocks. Oh, yeah. So, close one. She was a close one, mate. It was in that rip right there against the rock, so it's just charging out. There were people pointing up on the on the hill, screaming, and the father's just there taking pictures on the rocks up on the ledge there, so... Yeah, the father would have got the message if, if he was at his own son's funeral. It's just scary. Then, just minutes later, Harrison finds the same boy back in a no-swimming area. Hey, buddy. Please just come out to shore. Come back, come out. Hey, buddy. Mate, you can't swim here. What? You can see there's a sign. There's a dangerous current sign. There's no... Yeah, you got to go out the other end of the beach with the flags. Please don't go on the water here. Just, just do it for me, just a favour. Oh, my God. End of the day, when people come to the beach, I want them to go home. That's all I want. And our goal is to make sure no one drowns here. And it does get frustrating. You know, I know it is our job, but, you know, it's scary. The reality is, 
reality here is that people do drown if you're not watching the water. I don't want that to ever happen to me or any of us in the team. You get your, your run of the mill rescues down here. But every now and then you do one that's a real critical one. Fine, right, central to Blue Rhino, fourth ramp. As quick as you possibly can. Looks like little kid, he's just dropped off the bank into the hole. Get straight in, mate. Go get him now. You're actually second guessing whether you'll get to him in time. And when you leave the beach and hit the water, it just feels like everything slows down and you're watching people go down in front of you. And you're just hoping that they can just keep themselves above water for an extra five seconds so you can get to them. That's all you're hoping for. for a long time. And I'd hate, hate it to happen to me. At Bondi, danger is never far away. I was down at Backpackers Rip and watching a father and his daughter in the foreground. And then all of a sudden I see this young girl. She's going to go under and if she goes under and disappears into that deep hole, another 30 seconds or another 40 seconds underwater, it's, it's like you find her or she's gone. You gotta strip down, get the board, get in the water, hope you don't get slowed up by waves coming in, and then sprint to the patient. close to all the 30 seconds to get to her. Yeah, she was definitely uh, at a point, a serious point by the time I made contact with her. Right. Right. Okay, I'll take you in safely, okay? It's like a five-year-old kid on Terry's board. You know, we rescue thousands of adults a year, um, but we might only do a handful of kids, little kids, you know, and uh, every time one of the boys does a rescue of a kid, it's a big deal. My daughter nearly drowned then. Yeah. Okay, you need to go to the red and yellow flag. Yeah. Watch your back. Thank you. Okay. Uh, especially with young kids like that, because I lost my son. I, I know that feeling. Sorry, guys. My boy was trapped in the birth canal and had complications which cut the oxygen off for 10 minutes, but the result was a week later that he died. Whenever I do a rescue of a young child, that comes to the surface. She lost that beautiful little girl. She'd know what I'm talking about, you know? This is my brother, and I recognized it was her day. Because I was away. Oh my god, never follow me, okay? Jeffy, never follow me, me and say, am I getting to danger? And you're smaller and weaker swimmer than me, so you can't always follow me. Okay. 
10 a.m. Bronte Beach, just south of Bondi. Freelance photographer Fergus Wolverish shoots images of Australian beach life. Suddenly, the serenity is shattered. The reporter I was with um, was called me back and I came running back down. She's like, oh, something's going on, you know, in the water. There's a little blob, like, swimming out. And then, so I turned around and everyone was sort of looking and I said, any strong swimmers, go. I've noticed all the other boys running around like crazy. And so something bad had happened. And I heard the mum screaming, um, Noah, Noah. Which wasn't to like grab my board and, and I just seen a, just a tiny little body uh, just behind the breakers. It turned out to be a little girl. Just as I saw her, she was trying, still, still going for it, up and down, um, head bobbing under the water. But uh, not long after that, she just sort of flattened out and was underwater. And she was just like five or six metres from me underwater. It was you know, heavy. By the time I got to her, she was blue, not breathing. The distraught mother is on the shore. Mouse performs CPR on the girl's tiny body. Yeah, I gave her two, some mouth to mouth. two breaths. She just went from being blue and doing nothing to a little, a little cough and a little like eye flicker, and then she started crying, and then I, Sammy started crying, and then we just had a, like a little hug, and then started, and then we sat, then we had to get her in. Meanwhile, the girl's father is also rescued. He was close to drowning himself. Great life. Thank you so much. Awake? You're awake? Awake? Yeah, yeah. Keep, make sure, sure she's awake. awake. Keep her awake, okay? Yeah, okay. Let's keep walking up to the castle. Come in there. 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 Where's your where's your husband? <laughs> so someone should be probably looking at him because he's taking some water too. The tiny girl's name is Noah Kim. Her family are on holidays from Korea. Father June was underwater when he was rescued. Your daughter should be okay, okay? So, but you need to make sure someone looks at you and listens to your chest. How long was she unconscious? Mate, oh, who knows? You know, maybe three to three minutes. That was insane. I'm paddling out, I can see her body in the water, just her body, and I got hit by a wave, lost my board. And she's like five metres from here. Mate, and and I then H-Man just threw me his board and these, I was just yelling at these surfers. And then once, and once we body. turned with, once she came good and she vomited and that, we knew she was okay. I've turned around and this the other surfers, the local Bronny guys, just had this other guy just holding him up. He was just like out as well. And I was just thinking, well, what's going on here, you know? It's heavy. It's it's Noah will spend two days in intensive care you know? at Sydney Children's okay. Hospital. This is how quick this happens. stuff happens, you know? I mean, it's, you can't tell people enough that, you know, you lose your feet and you're gone within seconds, you know. Kids ain't with me because I've got a two-year-old, so... You know, it's just that thought of not being able to get her back. It's... These guys did an amazing job. Uh, that definitely defies odds being a lifeguard. Just watching Mouse resus a two-year-old child. Unbelievable.